evening, everyone. Uh, some of you may have read, and now you can hear that my seasonal allergies have once again taken my voice. So it's still me. It's not Stevie Nicks preaching up here. <laughs> it's still me. Welcome to Christ Our Anchor Presbyterian Church. Because of very little voice, I'm getting a little bit of help today. Madison, our Christian educator, is going to do the children's time, and Laurie Gardner is going to jump in in all kinds of parts. So we'll keep you on your toes, all right? Um, thank you so much for a really wonderful vacation time. I'm really grateful for it. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of announcements. Um, we do have our new member interest discussion today after church. You can bring your coffee and snacks in. It will be only about an hour. Child care will be provided. If you're watching from home and want to come, you just race on up here. And it's just very casual discussion. It does not commit you to anything. We just want to answer your questions about the church and give you some more information about who we are and what we care about. Um, also, tomorrow is our monthly, or not tomorrow, this month, it's Tuesday because of Labor Day, is our monthly play group from 3.30 to 5. Anyone with children is welcome to come and bring them, caregivers, grandparents, parents. We'd love to see you there, out on the playground, weather permitting. And then next Sunday, hard to believe already, is Rally Sunday. So thanks to our amazing deacons, we'll have a picnic after church, a big celebration of the fall year starting back up. Lots of programs are going to be starting. So watch hopes and notes for all the different things that you can get involved in. But do come next week and stay for the picnic and sign up so that you can bring some sides and desserts. That sign-up sheet's right on the Narthex table. Am I missing anything? And online, you can sign up. And I wanted to invite up Madison, our Christian educator, with one more important announcement for our families. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so next Sunday, one of the programs that's restarting is Fun Day School. It's starting again. Um, we are focusing on gratitude for now, from now until Advent, pretty much. I would love to have volunteers. Uh, we really need like two volunteers in the nursery and two volunteers in the Fun Day School classroom. Um, there will be, Fun Day School's not every day, but I will have a list of the dates up. And if you don't wanna lead Sunday school, that's fine. Just come as a helper. That would be very, I would be very appreciative of that. That being said, our first fun day school lesson is actually gonna be outside on the nature trail. So if you're bringing kids to that, just be aware that they're going to be outside and we're gonna be planting and we're going to be reading and really enjoying the trail for the first time and that is our opening lesson. It's going to be really fun. That's it. Thank you so much, Madison, and everyone. Let's continue our worship. Good morning. Please join me as we read responsively our opening prayer. We are called to be people of faith in the midst of the world. And so we mix our worship and our work, our faith and our life. We gather here as people who live in the world, and yet we gather as people who are called to see the God said, six days you shall labor and do all your work. 
Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We come in the name of the Spirit, resting from our labors. Let us worship God this day. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading this morning is Psalm 105, verses 1 through 6. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and judgments he has uttered. O oh, offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite up Madison and any children who would like to come and join us for children's time. Thank you, Matt. One of those kids needs to be my kid. <laughs> come on up, guys. It's children's time. Hi. Hi, Ella. Hi, Jack. Hi, Charlie. Okay, I'm gonna start with a question. It's late summer, it's almost fall. Something happens to kids around this time of year. <laughs> what happens? What happens to kids around this time of year? They go somewhere. Where do they go? They don't know, <laughs> they can't remember. They're really tired, I'm gonna start the word. Does it start with School. Are any of you in school? Yes, okay. So I just made an announcement that you have another school starting soon too, Fun Day School. And this year we're going to practice, we're gonna start a practice called a gratitude practice. Does anyone know what gratitude means? Do you know what that means? It means like being thankful like feeling thankful for some things. So there's scientists who study the human brain, and they have found that when you actively think about things you're thankful for, and sometimes even write them down, it helps your brain, and it actually changes your brain chemistry to make you feel less nervous, less sad, and more happy and calm. So we're gonna do that, especially because in a few months there's Thanksgiving, and that's the whole point of Thanksgiving. So I wanted to start by thinking, since it's the beginning of school, a new season, what are some things we are thankful for right now in our lives? It can be anything. I'm gonna start. I'm thankful for the playground, because then you guys can be in here with us, but you don't have to sit there by yourselves and get bored. Charlie, what are you thankful for? What about your mom? 
Charlie's really thankful for his mom. He's very thankful for that. How about you, Ella? What about your teachers? How about a teacher? How about you, Jack? Are you thankful for anything? Is there anything you really like? Reptiles, that's awesome. <laughs> yes, that is, reptiles are integral to our world. We need them. Dinosaurs, fill our museums. I think we should do a prayer because we can always thank God for all of the things that we see in our world and that help us. So maybe we, oh, I know you don't have a voice, but do you want to say what you're thankful for? Oh, me too. Um, all right, are we ready to pray? We can say, we can say, good morning, God. Today we are coming with many things to be thankful for. Number one on our list is reptiles. Number two, are our teachers and our children that come to Christ our anchor church and our anchors a we preschool classes and dinosaurs Charlie's mom um, one more thing guys and I'm really thankful for all television and all the opportunities we get to spend with each other here at church where we can feel at home with people that love us and care about us. Thank you, God, for all these things. Amen.
Our second scripture reading comes from Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 10 through 17. This is a very, very important part of the Old Testament. So please listen to these words. Then Moses answered, But look, they may not believe me or listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw the staff on the ground, and it became a snake. And Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it, and it became a staff in his hand, so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. But then Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But he said, Oh, my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Even now he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall speak for you to the people. He shall serve as a mouth for you, and you shall serve as God for him. Take in your hand this staff with which you shall perform the signs. This is the word of our Lord, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And the whole sermon was a silent prayer. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's take a moment of silent prayer to consider what God is already saying to us. Amen. Friends, for 10 weeks now, you all have lingered with me and with Dottie on the great questions of the Bible. We've quieted our internal anxious demands for answers, and instead, we've allowed ourselves to wonder where the questions themselves might be leading us. I've loved this series, and I heard a really great quote from a conservative Washington Post columnist, George Will, who I disagree with on lots of things, but I love what he says. I so agree with this. He says, the greatest threat to our civilization is certainty, is certainty. It stops growth and life. This is our last week of this series on questions, and I was inspired in particular by one of Dottie's sermons while I was away. See, I did watch. I was with you guys. Her sermon on Jesus feeding the 5,000, and it was a miracle that began with a question, Jesus asking, how many loaves do you have? And that question challenged something that many of us, individuals and churches, get stuck in nowadays more than ever. It challenges what's called a scarcity mindset. Have you heard of that? A scarcity mindset? A scarcity mindset responds to ideas and it answers with but. But. So it'll say, but we can't do that because we don't have enough money or people or skills or time or voice or anything enough of whatever that magic ingredient is that other people have who can do it. We can't do it. Did you hear that last part too? Because within a scarcity mindset, not only is there not enough, but there's comparison and competition with others. 
as opposed to creative and courageous collaborating with others. There's this assumption that there's only so much to go around, a limited pie, so we have to grab our piece. A scarcity mindset is frozen by what could be somewhat accurate assessments of what we do not have or what is not going right. But Jesus challenged that. He always saw the potential of a fish sandwich out in the crowd, a place to start. And I wondered, <clears throat> aren't there other places in the Bible where God puts forth that same kind of challenge? This feels really familiar, this lesson of having more than we think we do. It's actually all over the Bible. It is the bubbling undercurrent of so many stories, especially stories of reluctant leaders. And we're going to focus on one of those today named Moses. The seminal story where God calls Moses. We've most of us heard of the part where God speaks to Moses out of this burning bush. And Moses is presented with this unbelievable call to free his people, the Israelites, from generations of slavery in Egypt. But I want to give you a little background here on Moses. Moses himself, he's not a slave. In fact, he was raised in the top tiers, the 1%. He was raised in Pharaoh's own household as an adopted son to his daughter. But his people were Israelites. So every day, he had witnessed his own people doing backbreaking and humiliating work while he lived in a palace. I would call this double consciousness that Moses had. I learned about that term double consciousness in seminary from a black American writer, W.E.B. Du Bois, because he said that black Americans have that too, that sense of being both an American citizen and coming from generations of slavery where they didn't count as full people, holding both at the same time, double consciousness. I think Moses had that. And one day, Moses could not take this anymore. And when he saw his own kinsmen being severely beaten by an Egyptian, he snapped, and Moses killed that Egyptian. So this crime of passion, that was a turning point, and it led Moses to run away far out into the wilderness and build a new life there, a quiet, simple life with a shepherding people. And Moses intended to keep it that way until this dang bush, this call that came to him, God had been quiet, but God still cared. God heard the cries of the Israelites who had been suffering in slavery for 430 years at that point. Can you imagine that? That's so long that no person alive could remember a time when they were not slaves. And now he, Moses, one man, was expected to demand their freedom from the most powerful ruler in the world. But the thing is, Moses was paying attention. Moses paid enough attention to notice that desert bush that somehow was not consumed by the fire around it. And he stopped, and he looked, and he listened. And just doing that is more than most of us honestly do in our everyday life, wouldn't you say? Stopping and looking and listening. Just doing that he heard the voice of the Lord. Not only had it been hundreds of years of slavery, but also the Bible says that there's no record of God speaking at all during that time. 430 years, generations of what seemed like silence from God. But now God was speaking to Moses out in the middle of nowhere. So this was important. Moses knew that it was important. And in fact, he thought it was way too much for him. God clearly picked the wrong guy. You all might love the Charlton Heston version of Moses, that larger-than-life guy. But honestly, Moses is no superhero. He's no movie star. Moses is the ultimate reluctant leader. There's a Jewish midrash or analysis of scripture. They meditate on scripture. The Jewish midrash says that the back and forth between Moses and God about this lasted for a whole week, seven days. We see this much in the Bible, but they say they think it lasted an entire week, which sounds realistic to me because this was so big. Moses resists this call with everything he's got. 
He is full of questions, some in chapter 3 and some you heard here, questions that he thinks will convince God that he is not the one to do this. Questions like, who am I to do this? Well, if they ask who sent me, what do I say? On whose authority? I can't speak for a talking bush. And what about my heavy tongue? The Bible scholars think that that might have been a stutter, but it could have been any impediment of voice, maybe like this one. My heavy tongue, what about my heavy tongue? And then finally, what if they just don't believe me? What if they don't believe me? Moses is so full of questions, so much insecurity, and they're not really questions, they're objections. Moses does not want to hear God's answers. Moses just does not want to do this. And God's answer, this is so common in the Bible, God's answer is another question. He asks, what is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? What was in Moses' hand was a shepherd's staff, one of the most everyday, unremarkable tools that you can imagine. I was trying to think of a modern day equivalent, and at first I thought of something, what is something everyone has? I thought of a cell phone, but no, because we pay big money for those, and we panic if we lose them, right? That's too valuable. So I thought some more and some more, and then I came up with maybe that staff is more like our toilet paper. Honestly, that was pretty valuable during the pandemic, but on a regular basis, we don't even think about it. We need it, we use it, we make sure that we have it, but otherwise, it's nothing remarkable, right? An everyday thing. But imagine if God said that even something like that could be transformed into something glorious, something liberating. You might think I'm crazy to make that comparison, but honestly, we need to understand about this staff. God is saying anything, anything can be used for God's purpose. God is crazy and absurd that way. It's not me. It's God. Really, God can use anything. All of Moses' questions and objections and hesitations did not get him off the hook because no matter what he asked or what he said, God basically said back, I can work with that. I can work with that. Can you hear God saying that to you all today about those things that make you feel like you just can't do it? Doing it might just be doing life, doing everyday life. Or maybe you can't try this new thing. You can't keep this project going. You can't be who you feel you are inside. Whatever it is, you just can't do it. But God says, I can work with that. And God says, what is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? What do you have? What do you have that maybe you think is actually a liability or a weakness that God can use somehow? See, God had already been using what was inside of Moses without him even realizing it. Even Moses' grave and violent crime was something that opened his eyes to the fact that he cared about his people. Even if he was not experiencing what they were, he cared about it. He was not a slave, but their plight mattered to him. There's a pastor named Reverend Zena Jock who said, everyone has a story that will open life for someone else. Everyone has a story that will open life for someone else. And this action that Moses did was eye-opening for him. He may not ever have paid attention to God's call in the palace, but he definitely took notice out in the quiet wilderness. And furthermore, God had given Moses that double consciousness, that double identity that seemed like a burden and a conflict in his heart. God gave that to him to spark his passion for people, for justice. What made Moses not quite fit in anywhere wound up being the key to his call, to God choosing him to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. So you may feel like you don't fit in in a lot of places. Maybe you're more introverted. Introverts have a hard time at church. Side note, that's a sermon for another day. Maybe you don't love small talk the way a lot of social settings do. Maybe you deal with anxiety or you have a dark sense of humor that people don't get. 
Maybe you're in a very emotional time or maybe you went through something that you don't think anyone else could understand. And God says, I can work with that. What's that in your hand? So what do you say? Is there something that we have that we too can throw down and let God use for a larger purpose? Can God use our money, our time, our space, our friends, our abilities? Remember, Moses was 80 when he was called. Just saying. Can God use the things that make us uncomfortable? Can God use our curiosity? Can God use our compassion and the things that move us? Can God use the people who we know who might help someone else? The thing is, friends, if God is calling us to do something, God usually doesn't wait until we are ready to do it. If God calls us to be more generous, God won't wait till you win the lottery, right? You see what I mean? God doesn't wait. God calls. This is where God has taken nine steps towards us, and we have to take that last step. It's scary, but there's freedom on the other side. What a perfect challenge for all of us on this Labor Day weekend. It's not a holiday we think about very often, at least not me, but it honors those who work and have worked so hard to make us who we are. Some of that work is paid, and some of that work is not. Some of that work continues long after formal retirement. But if we think about the things that God is calling us to do, the work, maybe we can all benefit from this blessing in closing, this blessing for Labor Day by Carol Penner. She says, bless the work of our hands, O God. Bless the hands that work the land, hands that move earth, plant seeds and harvest hands with calluses and dirty fingernails, strong hands. Bless the hands that use machines, hands that drive cars, trucks, and forklifts, hands on computer keyboards, capable hands. Bless the hands that make things, hands that manufacture and create, practical hands. Bless the hands that clean, that wash, mop, and scrub, hands that know what to do with soap, determined hands. Bless the hands that make music and art, hands that are creative tools, artistic hands. Bless the hands that care for people, hands that cook and feed, heal and nurture, loving hands. Bless the hands that are generous, hands that are always trying to be empty. Bless the tiny baby hands, bless the strong adult hands, bless the hands folded in prayer, Bless the hands lifted in praise. Our hands, Lord, do the work of your hands. Amen. me again. Now is time for our joys and concerns. So I'm going to ask for anyone that wants to lift up anything out there. Judy. That's hard. That's 
that's rough. Okay. Who else? Oh, okay, Pastor so Jesse. Last one off the list, but this is very important. That two of our members, Van and Franklin, are expecting their baby this week. And they're here today. I know. Yay! I know it's coming up. Yay! Exciting. <clears throat> okay, let me try to write this down so I can. Yes, Alice. Oh, cool. Nice. Not nice that he died, but nice that they're going to celebrate him at the parade. <laughs> Cindy? <laughs> Yay. Harder me, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, let's over here, Jane. Um, prayers for um, Alabama, the mother of a friend of mine who's having um, surgery for her jaw surgery on Wednesday. She's having Diana's having jaw surgery. Uh, oh, okay. 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 Uh, who else had hands over there? Tom. Okay, who else on this side did I miss? Diane. Okay, so who had the stroke? My friend Sharon. Okay, friend Sharon's stepmom had the stroke. I'm not as fast as Pastor Jesse at this. Debbie. Forty-three, Jesse. It's her name. Uh, Jesse, right? That's her name. Uh, wow. And you're still thirty-nine. So how does that work out? Okay. Who else? Yes. Remind me of your name. I apologize. Dot. That's right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay, well, happy anniversary. Son and daughter-in-law, okay. And how many years? Very good. Yeah, we just celebrated 40 this year. I put up with my husband for 40 years. It's like <laughs> amazing in of itself. <laughs> Those of you that know me really well and my husband. Uh, okay. Celebrating 34 years. Okay, who else? Ann. Boo. What was his name? Sri? I'll just. Okay. Oh, Edie. I know her. Her, oh, that's, I'm sorry. Oh. So great, yeah. Okay, who else? 
Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, Olga. Patty. Patty, okay, hi, Patty. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. And that's a friend of yours? A friend. Okay, that's sorry about that. Okay, who else? Making sure I don't miss anybody. Okay, I have actually one too. Um, good friend of mine, Liz, her uh, friend from, longtime friend from college, passed away suddenly. Um, at the age of 69, which is kind of scary because I just turned 65 this year, so four years away isn't that far. Um, and also, uh, prayers for the family of Jimmy Buffett and all of his friends and family. Um, so he will be missed, and so we'll, as long as his music will go on. So um, anyway, anybody else, you sure? Because I got a lot to do here, so I'll do my best. Okay, if you could all please put your hands together, bow your heads. Lord, we pray for all of the concerns that have been named in our COA community today, and we thank you with our wholehearted gratitude for all those things that bring us joy. At this time, I'd like to raise up uh, prayers of concern, Lord, for many of our um, community whether they are church members or outside of our community. First, we'd like to raise up Olga Sablotny. We love her. Um, she had a major fall, lots of broken bones, and we are, her family is having to decide what Olga's future plans will be so that you can keep her safe, Lord. Also, um, we would like to say prayers for a friend of Jane's, Diana, who is getting jaw surgery for some cancer. Lord, please see that all of the cancer is removed and that Diana can begin her life again. Uh, also prayers for Diane Ray's friend Sharon, whose stepmom just had a stroke. Lord, get her back to herself and um, whatever the stroke has caused to get her back to the person that we know and love. Uh, also, prayers for Patty's friend, Debbie, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Lord, so much of that is here. We know that that's just part of living. Um, please watch over these people and bring them, know, let them know that you love them. Also, prayers uh, for Craig Segree, who recently passed away suddenly at the age of 52. Um, also, we have some prayers from Alice Robeson celebrating the life of Ralph, the great puppeteer. And I'm sure he's up there giving great puppet shows um, for you now, Lord. We would also say prayers for uh, Jane Bars, for her daughter Emily, who is recovering from brain surgery, and for her friend Layla, who has entered hospice care. Um, also, prayers, Lord, as Mike Henderson has his surgery on Tuesday, be with him, make the surgery smooth, and make his recovery awesome. We also have prayers for Karen Hoover for her upcoming surgery, and we also um, pray for uh, Terry Shaner as he reaches the end of his life. Such a wonderful man. Um, he married my husband and I and baptized my first daughter, and he's wonderful, but that he enter into his new phase of life with you in peace and comfort. Also prayers for Rick Link for uh, on his friend and the recent loss of her husband. Chris Lyons for family member Donna who suffers from cellulitis. Also, Anna Wertz, her two cousins, Christy and Jerry, who are struggling with cancer diagnoses. Dave Williams, who's also recovering from surgery last week. And now, Lord, I'd like to like be in a more positive note that uh, Van and Franklin are expecting their new baby, and hopefully we will see a new baby here within the upcoming week. So we're having prayers for them. Thanks to God, thanks to you, God, for bringing Pastor Jessie back to us and giving her her voice so she could give 
the word today is so important to all of us. Um, praise to all of those that are helping Tom feel better about himself, his, those of us here in the COA community, his doctors, and other friends, so we can get him back to him, him, his regular self as well. Also, um, prayers of thanksgiving for Debbie's oldest daughter, Jessie, turning 43, uh, dot with having her son and daughter-in-law here to celebrate their 34 years of marital bliss. And Lord, we know that you are always with us every day we walk. Um, help us to be grateful. Help us to live in that, that gratitude that you give so freely to us. And thank you. We put it all of this in your hands and remind ourselves that we're not in charge. You are. And we need to trust you with all of our cares and with our lives. And we pray all of this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Moses must have felt small and powerless in the face of God's instructions to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt. Yet God moved Moses to courage and great things because Moses trusted God with his life. When we share what we have and trust God with our lives, great things will happen here in our church and far beyond. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Would the ushers please come forward? Now, this part of our service, we are going to do our Holy Communion and remember how grateful we are to have a loving God that watches over us. This is Christ's table. It's a table of love and welcome. It is a table of fellowship with the poor and communion with the earth. So come, those of you who have great faith and those of you who wish you had more, Come, those of you who have tried to follow Jesus and those of you who have failed. Come, those of you who depend on this meal for your lives and those of you for whom it is a strange thing. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this time of worship. The word worship literally means the work of the people. And so I thank you for everyone present with us in person and online whose life and stories and passions make this church what it is. I pray that each one of us would be nourished by this holy meal. 
in just the way we need for our faith journey. You know us, you love us, you feed us, and so we thank you. And now we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we remember that Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, and said to all of his disciples, take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and poured it out, saying, take this, all of you, and drink. This is the cup of my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the life-saving death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus until he comes again. Would the ushers please come, or the servers please come forward? Friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Take and eat. Brothers and sisters, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take and drink.
please join me in our concluding prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this supper shared in the spirit with your son Jesus, who makes us new and strong, who brings us life eternal. We praise you for giving us all good gifts in him and pledge ourselves to serve you, even as in Christ you have served us. Amen. For those of you who will be staying after to learn more about COA and membership, we'll be meeting right in here and circling up in about 10 or 15 minutes. If you're an existing member and you just want to come and sing COA's praises, you're welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. For our final blessing, this is a responsive benediction, and the response is, we go forth with God, okay? With a song of praise on our lips. We go forth with God. With the love of God in our hearts with a commitment to usher in God's kingdom with all that we are and all that we can be. Go in peace.